Hey, this is Scott, and today we're going to talk about macro photography. First of all, if you're new to this channel, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Also, check the link in the description below to see the blog post about this video. And it's windy. So we'll start out by giving some very basic information about macro photography. There are macro lenses and then there are other ways such as close-up filters, extension tubes, and even reversing your lens. These latter methods will all have some kind of drawback though, for example not being able to control your aperture or not being able to focus at further distances. Also, the quality of the results will largely depend on which lens you use. Some lenses aren't very strong at close distances and they're also not very strong wide open. Something like a close-up filter will just magnify all of these imperfections. So with a macro lens, you're getting a lens that's designed to perform at its best when it's at close distances and also performs very strong wide open. On top of this, of course, you can control your aperture and you can focus at any distance. I'd recommend using one of the cheaper options to see if you like macro photography, but if you do, I highly recommend getting some kind of real macro lens because it'll just open up a lot of possibilities for you with the amount of control and freedom that it has. A true macro lens is one that can give you a one-to-one -one reproduction ratio. What this means is that your subject will be reproduced on your sensor in the same size that it is in real life. Now, of course, a 35 millimeter sensor or APS-C sensor can be blown up to a much larger print. So when you print it or when you view it on a screen, you'll be able to see details that you'd never be able to see otherwise. There are many lenses everywhere from point and shoot cameras to more expensive lenses that are branded with the word macro on them, but they don't actually shoot one-to-one -one macro. Oppositely, there are many lenses that don't have that branding, but can get very close to macro, for example, a 1 to 3 or 1 to 4 reproduction ratio. Macro lenses from any maker tend to be very sharp, and things like autofocus accuracy and performance don't matter as much, which we'll talk about in a moment, but for that reason, I would recommend checking out some third-party options as well to save a little money. Alright, so now for some tips and techniques. I'm going to be talking about handheld macro photography, not something that's set up in a studio. As you get closer to your subject, the depth of field is going to get thinner and thinner, which means when you're doing macro macro photography, even sub down to f5.6, f8, or f11, you're going to have a very, very shallow depth of field. On top of that, things like handshake are always amplified at close distances, and IS is not going to help the closer you get. So you'll want to keep a shutter speed much faster than usual. I've been told that four times the normally recommended shutter speed is a good starting point for macro. So for example, my macro lens is 100 millimeters, so I would shoot, generally speaking, at 1 400th of a second or faster when I'm doing macro. This worked out fine for me so far, but it will depend on you and your lens and also your subject. On a day like today, where it's very windy, I have to deal with movement of my subject as well as movement of the lens. Because you need this higher shutter speed and you need to close down your aperture a bit, then you're going to need a lot of light. So unless you have an extra light with you, you're going to want to stay away from very heavily shaded places when you're searching for a subject. So when you're shooting macro, using autofocus is going to give you a lot of struggle. When you're dealing with such tiny details, your autofocus might tend to hunt back and forth and it's just going to drive you crazy. Macro lenses will often have a kind of limiter, which will stop it from going all the way to infinity when it does hunt, but it's still going to drive you crazy. On top of that, with such small details, it might be hard for the autofocus system to know exactly where it is that you want to focus. So manual focus is usually the best way to go. A method that's usually worked for me is to put your lens into manual focus and focus it down to its minimum focus distance. We're going to focus not by turning the manual focus ring, but by moving our bodies back and forth. What you're going to do is get it as close to in focus by eye as you can, and then take a series of shots as you very gently and very slowly sway your body in one direction. The idea is that somewhere between your first shot and your last shot, you're going to hit that perfectly critical point of focus and get your shot. So I found a kind of broken snail shell in the dirt here that's kind of cool, so I thought I'd use that as an example to show you what I mean. So like I said, I have my lens in manual focus and I set it to its minimum focus distance. This will guarantee me a full one-to-one -one reproduction ratio. So let's try it out. It might seem excessive to take so many shots, but when you're dealing with such a shallow, shallow depth of field as you do with macro photography, it's kind of unavoidable unless you're shooting on a tripod in a very highly controlled situation. 
In that case, a lot of photographers might use a technique called focus stacking, which we could get into in another video if you're interested. So macro photography is a lot of fun and very addicting. No matter what method you're using to get your photographs, go and explore the world around you. Take pictures of things you would never think to take pictures of because I guarantee you when you see them up close, it's going to be just a totally new experience. So this was meant just to be a very basic introduction to macro photography. But as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching.